This is the ECG Golf Club. And welcome to this week's Hackers Podcast. Every episode available on Spotify and YouTube. Now watch this drive. Hey there, sports fans. Welcome to the ECG Hackers Podcast. I'm the Ash Man, joined by my good friend, Zook. Brother, how are you, mate? I'm doing well, mate. It's been a um, a busy week, obviously, with the <laughs> uh, PGA Championship this past weekend. But yes, um, we no, did have a busy week. Been enjoying, week. enjoying watching golf. Haven't had a chance to play much, but um, mm. certainly been enjoying enjoying golf nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, good to good to have you around, brother. It's my favorite time of the week, Thursday night. This is episode sixteen. I've gone with a different camera angle here. I really want to blind you with my big bald <laughs> head tonight, Chris. <laughs> um, joining us tonight is a very special guest. I first thought it, I thought you hooked us up with Conor McGregor, but uh, even better than that, let's bring to the stage out of the green room, Jake. How are you, brother? I'm well, Ash. How are you? I'm awesome, man. Great to have you here. And then if you're watching on Spotify, YouTube, I think that's that's the 16th hole, is it, Chris? At Augusta, you're sitting on. Or the 13th, one of the two. I think it's the 12th, is it? 12th, there you go. 13th. I'm an idiot. One of them. <laughs> Mate, uh, welcome, welcome to the show, Jake. This is your first time on the Hackers Podcast. Um, technically we second. Before the show. Technically, oh, technically second. second. He, did, he did do yeah. his, his fantasy and he did quite Maybe well there. You did. You kicked my ass in the in the fantasy. Now you're from uh, the Newey area, Newcastle area of Australia. Is that right? Yeah, from up Newcastle, but been down in Sydney area for the last ten years. Nice. And you play a bit of golf up Newcastle way. Any courses? Yeah, particular? home courses. Uh, Hawks Nest. So yeah, nice, nice. course up on up in mm. Port Stephens. And yeah, when I was a bit younger, played a lot at uh, Curry Curry. Curry it's Curry. My first course. Yeah. There's a course up there. Oh, it's probably been 25 years since I played there. But Horizons is that up that way? Horizons. Yeah, that's up the bay, Nelson Bay. I Nelson Bay. Played it before. Yeah, on the other side. It was a great so. course 20 odd years ago. I remember playing there with. Yeah, um, I think it's still in pretty good nick. So I want to get it? there one day. Yeah. Oh well, mate, I'll come down. We'll come down. We'll play together. It'd be awesome. Let's um, do. Sneaky good Hudfield. He he beats me every he, time we play. He's uh, he's ooh. good with a wrench in his hand. So uh, yeah, ooh. look out, Ash. Current he's handicap, Jake. Challenge. Current handy. What do you got? Uh, what are you off? I don't have one, but I'd say I don't know. I'd go. 20, You're one of these sneaky 20, guys that rocks 20, up at 20, these 20. tournaments. Yeah, <laughs> and just kills it. <laughs> I don't have handicap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One I of wish. our friends of the ECG, Jake. His name's Clublock. Um, he wanted to uh, send us a message. Here's a message from Jace. ECG Hackers, what is up? It's uh, Jace live from the Greek Islands. Um, just want to say, having a great time, loving the pod. Um, looking forward to who's in your four ball, the Greek edition, uh, when I get back. Uh, but for now, I'm going to jump into my mankini and um, hang out with Belvedere. So, see you guys. Peace, Jace. Great to see you, Club Lock. Um, and he named it. Chris, he said next week is a Greece themed who's in your four ball. He said it. So next week's who's in your four ball is Greece themed. Look forward to um, it. And he's over there with Belvedere. So, Chris, uh, Belvedere's not doing any voiceovers today. I had to pre record everything. Um, and here's another <laughs> shot for all the ladies there of Jace just uh, over in the Greek. Did Jace clear that one? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> sure, I'm sure the ladies love it. Uh, as per usual, our resident analyst. Zook is going to take us to the newsroom. He's, um... Let's get this show rolling like a perfect putt and head over to Zook in the ECG newsroom. Over to you. Thanks. Uh, just kicking off probably with one thing we teased during our mini pod in relation to the PGA Championship. We kind of teased that we would talk about the course and we really didn't get round to it. So one bit of interesting information that I came across during the week was a, uh, a post on Twitter by Justin Ray. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll share that on screen. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this was quite a remarkable outcome in terms of the overall score posted by the what? field at the PGA Championship. 
as you can see there, the 2024 Valhalla version of the PGA Championship was the lowest combined score in history. Uh, the Look field combined for uh, 214 under par. Uh, the previous best for the tournament was 40 over. So that's a combined 254 strokes lower. Uh, so that's quite a remarkable outcome, uh, particularly Blame. when, as said before in, in our preview, that the motto of the groundskeepers was um, firm, fast and fun. Um, fun. So yeah, right. um, it was certainly fun, don't get me wrong, yeah. um, but the firm and, and fast element certainly wasn't to be seen and perhaps yeah. not necessarily within their control given mm. the rain that was um, present earlier on in the week, but perhaps they should have prepared for that. Um, mm. But given that disparity and that really low scoring, I guess, Ash, how did you rate Valhalla overall as the course host, however you oh. want to refer it, and the output it produced? Yeah, a good question. Um, I come from to golf from a different angle. A lot of what I enjoy is how things look, Jake, and people at home, like the aesthetics are very important to me, being a bit more of a creative person. So I thought aesthetically it looked fantastic. Um, I thought it was going to play a lot more harder than it did. The the, the roughs looked really quite brutal and thick. Um, but when you put that stat up there, I'm blown away. So do you think, you know, was it too easy, Chris and Jake? Do you think the, the course was too easy? What do you think, Jake? Um, I think it just goes to show that these days the pros are just so good. They can get mm. out of anything, no matter how thick the rough is. And the only thing mm. that can really trip them up now is just making the greens hard and fast. Yeah. If they got soft greens, they, they can almost get away with murder. Yeah. <laughs> um, Even the bunkers too, Jake, I reckon, and Chris, obviously, um, I, I have heard a couple of them say, oh, I'm aiming for the bunker. So... Is bunkers becoming redundant and is it a bit more of a, you know, a, a legitimate bailout now for these pros? They're so good out of the bunker. I heard that too and that's become a, a, a bit of a uh, a tactic uh, in terms mm -hmm. of course management for a lot of pros. Um, that up and down often produces a a relatively good outcome. It's particularly mm -hmm. a, a choice when you're dealing with par fives if there is an option to, to get there on to. Um, being the preferred miss to be in a bunker so that you can get up and down for for a birdie. So, yeah, I you know, I thought it did not present the challenge that mm. a Agreed. major course should. That being said, it certainly produced an entertaining and outstanding yeah. uh, viewing experience. And from, from that perspective, you know, A+. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, as I mentioned um, moving forward in terms of some of the courses, particularly for the US Open, I think it may well set a bar that will ensure that the groundskeepers there at, uh, I think we're off to Pinehurst number two, I think that mm. will be uh, a very challenging layout and I think they will go uh, dial it up to 11 uh, in terms mm. of uh, a difficulty given the outcome of this past week. I've heard they lengthened a few of the holes there too, is that right at the... It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, that seems to be um, all we can do now. The pun, part of the course, what they do. Um, mm. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, moving on. And in terms of the ramifications of the event, uh, there was certainly a shake up in relation to official world golf rankings for players. Yeah. Uh, none more so than a uh, a familiar individual who's commented and discussed a lot here on, on the channel and probably where some of his biggest fans, uh, Mr. Bryson DeChambeau, uh, mm -hmm. after the events and the result uh, with his second place finish, he managed to pocket 60 official world championship golf points, mm -hmm. uh, which saw him rocket up to world ranking number 35. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly being in the top 50 for him, he is very important in terms of qualification for events moving forward um, and the like. So as you can see here on screen, uh, he's accumulated 99 total points, of which 60 has come from uh, last week. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. And because he's playing on the Live Tour, uh, despite only playing in 10 events over the past 
24 months that qualify for world championship points. Uh, his divisor is 40. Uh, that's set in the formula to, how can I say, uh, avoid uh, the, I guess, initial um, bias towards people who perform well in one or two events, such as mm -hmm. Bryson has. Uh, however, if his divisor was the actual uh, events played, uh, he would have a average points of around nine as opposed to the 2.4, uh, right. which would have saw him uh, shoot to being the second-ranked player yep. in the world. I think Xander's mm -hmm. on about 8.9 average points. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess some of the awesome. things that were interesting when looking at this, and I, and I ex excuse me for nerding out a little bit, but um, I guess my question to you, Ash, and I might put up some other statistics just to frame your response, is is there too much of a bias given towards majors when it comes to world championship points? So just to put it into context, um, another, I guess, individual that we often bring up when it comes to world championship points, uh, Joachim Neiman, as you recall, uh, he won the uh, Australian Open, uh, well, the most mm -hmm. recent version. And for that win, he only accumulated 14.8 world championship points. Right. Yep. And on another scale, uh, I managed to get out to Castle Hill Country Club, as mm -hmm. listeners may remember, uh, for mm -hmm. the WebEx Series event hosted by Braith and Asta. And for that win, Kazuma Kabori earned 2.1 world championship points. So okay. having taken that into account, I don't want to bias your answer, but mm -hmm. uh, do you think there is a – too much weight given to the results of, of majors or given their prestige and, and their difficulty and, and the quality of the field, their, their weighting is appropriate? I'll, I'll start with you, I'm Ash. Gonna, yeah, I don't have a massive answer, but I think you just said it right then. It's the quality of the field. A major has so much quality, so much more pressure, so much um, prestige. So I think the weight is – is good. It's applicable for masters. I think. I think it's fine. To be honest with you, I think it's it's the the field you're up against, really. Uh, and someone like Kazuma Kabori, who, who yes, he can win at Castle Hill and gets two points. That's cool. But then put him in the mix, and he's way behind. So I think I, I think we're on the right path. It's just we got to start getting these live guys some points. I mean, seriously, that's my big concern. Jake, your thoughts? How long? On the how long to the point? How long do the points hang around for? They hang around for 24 20. months and they progressively erode. Um, After mm -hmm. 24 or over? Yeah, over 24, over 24 yeah. months they progressively erode. I think it should just be an annual thing. I'm probably fine with the waiting, but I think you shouldn't mm -hmm. be getting credit for something you'd done two years ago. A lot, lot of things happen in two years. Yeah. I think that's how tennis works. I think tennis is a 12-month cycle. 12 months? Um, like an ant, yeah, and it resets every year. In you terms think. of the points, yeah. So, like each event you play, it replaces your points from yeah. last year. Because um, then you've got a like, the, like problem, yeah. though, of, of the Asian tour and then the, the Euro tour don't all sort of come into the same time of the year, do they? No, you've got that. And, and like I said, I, I, I'd probably support the 12 month. Uh, rather than the 24-month um, cycle. Mm -hmm. I guess that supports more uh, of the recent form uh, because mm -hmm. if you do, have, you do bag a win at um, a major or do well, that's 60 points. And to put it in perspective, um, Joachim Neiman is ranked 88th in the world. Yeah, uh, He does not have 60 world championship points. Mm. So that gives it some perspective in terms of there's only 87 guys with more than 60 points and Bryson just bagged 60. But um, mm. but, yeah. but then when Joachim did win in in live and it's just it's just a major problem. Yeah. This live it is live a, it is a, is a big problem, problem and um, yeah. Any anyway, I'll I, mm. I won't nerd out over the numbers. Well, too something much. we can I've, solve. <laughs> no, and That's I know nice. I've threatened to go and to do a deep dive on the official world golf ranking, and maybe that might become an obsession section later on. Yeah, and I promise nice. I won't bore everyone. I'll do my best to make it interesting. But uh, uh, just finally, probably just one thing to touch on. Um, knowing me, um, you know that I certainly keep abreast of what Nelly Corder is doing. Uh, she yes. certainly had a return to form 
uh, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, As much as the PGA Championship was interesting, it was an interesting final round for um, the LPGA event, the uh, uh, Mizuho Americas Open. Uh, It really went down to the wire between Nelly Corder and and Aussie uh, Hannah Green. Uh, Hannah mm-hmm. played really well and and was unlucky to to get through for her maiden win. Uh, she's certainly been uh, there or thereabouts and looking good for for Paris if she is able to qualify. She's now mm-hmm. reached her highest ranking uh, ever on the LPGA tour, so uh, certainly a, a tip of the cap from me mm-hmm. to her. Uh, again, it was a a a finish in which they went into uh, the 18th hole. Uh, even, but an unfortunate and untimely bogey by Hannah uh, gave the uh, tournament to Nelly. Mm -hmm. I guess my question uh, to you two, and I might start with Jake first this time, uh, given that uh, male majors do attract a lot of eyeballs and take a lot of media attention away, um, should the LPGA look to have um, the weekend off uh, so that they can gain uh, prominence um, and a greater media coverage uh, without the major interfering? No, I don't think so. Um, I looked up the prize money for the tournaments. So when the PGA was on and the week before and the week up, or they've got the week off, but and the prize money was the same. So they seem to be putting out the same prize money. So from their point of view, why not just keep playing? And I think the TV coverage was over by 6 a.m. our time because I didn't actually get to see any of it. Um, So they seem to schedule it to avoid clashing with the end of the PGA as well. So Mm -hmm. um, I think they're their own tour. It's only gaining more popularity, but I also don't know Mm -hmm. what their TV ratings are like as well. So um, Mm -hmm. I don't know that they need to be avoiding the men's tournament because they're playing the same weekends most of the time anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And plus so much sport consumed on TVs now is BVOD, which is video on demand. So, you know, um, you can watch it on demand whenever you want. Um, You just said something that made me think, Chris and Jake. Um, Imagine mixed doubles golf in the Paris Olympics because I mentioned last week on the podcast – I don't think golf should be in the Olympics, but imagine I, if it was mixed doubles, that'd be awesome. Imagine having Bryson and Nelly playing together against Hannah and Minwoo Lee or Minwoo Lee and his sister or something. And then the yeah. points could be weighted to be this, um, what's, I don't know what the really correct term is, but mixed you, you format. Don't need to, you don't need to weight them, but, um, you know, I, I look, I would love to see that and I would How love to see would a, I would love to see a mixed event. I think we've mentioned yeah. that before here that um, some, you know, it may be the a, a, and the and the rider, yeah. something in the middle that, that incorporates yeah. both sexes is something yeah. that I think would be a ratings machine. Uh, mm. I think it would it would be perfect for TV. Yeah. Uh, and but so I want to see would, got them playing together in the same hole, you know, or what, yeah. Yeah. Whether it's alternate shot or whether it's, you know, they all tee off the one tee, that'd be awesome. Awesome mate, television. Mate, we do it here in Australia. Get out to WebEx. Get out to WebEx. True. Get out to local True, stuff. Yes. It's, True, yes. It's pretty good. Trying to it's inter- pretty good. Yeah. Um, cool. Sorry, interrupted there with my, my – Mate, all good. And that's it from me. That's it for the that's week. That's it. Awesome. Thank you once again, Chris. Um, here's a message from one of our sponsors, and we're going to hit you with Ripton. Big brand golf balls, up to 70% cheaper than retail. We're one of Australia's largest sellers of second-hand golf balls, so you save big time. Discountgolfballs.com.au. Never pay full price again. Thank you, Discount Golf Balls. There's a uh, code you can use, ECG Hackers, and you get an extra 10% off your golf balls. Tim was on the show last week and uh, gave us an awesome insight, Jake, into golf ball compression rates and matching them with your swing. Um, And it's fantastic. I've had some really good feedback about that, and we we might do it again. Um, Did you change your ball potentially, boys? Did you listen to what he was saying? I did. You did? Tim's done himself out of business. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What are you playing? Went, what were you playing and what do you got now? 
Well, I got a bunch of balls off him, um, the Pro, Pro V1 X's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then from listening to him last week, it's basically I shouldn't even be bothering. So I went and bought some, uh, what is it, Callaway Supersofts. Yeah, me too. Uh, me which too. I've used, which I was using before and went all right with them. So mm. I'm going to stick with those. Mm. Yeah, good good ball. I uh, like the new Callaway Supersofts. They've got this new paint splatter line on them. Have you seen those yet? There's a blue and a red no. one. And they're like okay. a paint splatter on them. They're really cool. Um, Chris, you're, a, you're still rocking the Mizuno RBs or something? Yeah, you? still rocking the Mizuno RBs. Got to work through my uh, batch that I've got, but then I might yeah. uh, might look to play something a little harder given um, yeah. swing speeds, I think. Uh, but anyway, it's um, yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah, love it. Time for Ripped or Yipped. Hey, fellas. Belvedere here again. It's time to go around the table with Ripped or Yipped. Let's see what side of the argument the boys are on. Ripped or yipped. Back to you, Ash. Thank you, Belvedere. Now, because Jake is uh, a new member of the ECG, we're going to start with Jake, then we're going to go to Zook, and then I'll finish it off. But ripped or yipped, I've got eight different statements. If you agree with this statement, you rip it like a drive down the middle of the fairway. If you disagree with the statement, you yipped it like a terrible chip on the side of a green. So the eight statements. The first one is the use of rangefinders at the PGA Championship is al- should be allowed. Ripped or yipped? Yep, yipped. yipped. They're professionals. They've got a caddy. They've got yard books. Yep. The only time yep. they should be allowed to use it maybe is if they're in, in a tree line where I'm assuming the yard books don't really help as much. But mm-hmm. they they got so much help. Like they can hit the crowd yeah. and it bounces back in. They've got yeah. course furniture yeah. they can hit. Yeah, so I think I think yipped. Okay, nice yipped for for Jake, Chris. Uh, I'm ripped. Uh, there's that much technology in the sport as it is. Why not have another piece? Um, I think it's one of those things. They've eliminated uh, the green uh, books, which is fine. Um, but I think this is um, more than more than okay in allowing mm-hmm. the caddy to be able to use the uh, range finders. So, um, yeah. I'm me. teetering on the brink here, Chris. I'm not sure which way to go. So <laughs> I'll stick with, I'll stick with yipped. Actually. I think, yeah, they've got a caddy. The caddies can do course walks. The caddies can do all the mapping and the, the footprint. So um, things can change though. Um, second statement to Jake. Uh, Scotty's arrest and mainstream media coverage helped lift his profile, ripped or yipped. I think Chris sent this story through to me and I mm-hmm. thought it was a joke. <laughs> um, mm. I'm going to go yipped. I think anyone that follows golf or sport in general knows who Scotty Scheffler is, um, especially mm-hmm. after the Masters win. Um, but I think it was probably maybe a lesson in in how to deal with the police in the media um, in mm. his pre- press conferences afterwards, I think. That probably went a long way to uh, getting the charges dropped. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Zook. Um, I, I go I go ripped. It certainly lifted his profile. I had conversations with people who had I'd never had a conversation about golf with before over the weekend. Uh, it was mm-hmm. front and centre um, in mainstream media. Um, people were certainly um, talking about what happened, yep. granted, it wasn't on course activities, but they were still talking golf. They were still talking Scotty yep. Scheffler. I think it, it, mm-hmm. it lifted his profile immensely. Okay. I think the key word here is when he said lifted, I'm going to go yipped because I think it didn't lift him, his profile. It exposed his profile, but it didn't lift him. If anything, I just felt like in after uh, the day after, he didn't look uh, – I, I, I didn't look to him as an inspiring character. I thought there's something flawed there. So um, I'm going to go yipped. Uh, This is one that's going to be close to Zook's heart. Uh, Mizuno number their golf balls, one, three, five, and seven odd numbers. Uh, Ripped or yipped on the odd numbers? Sorry, Jake. Ripped or yipped, odd numbers? Uh, I went yipped. Like, who cares? <laughs> uh, yeah. Why, why, do, why do balls only go to four anyway? Or one, one, three, no, five? No, they seven? don't. They, you can get anything. I've, I've only ever seen single digits, but. Um, yeah, no, I've seen. I was using double digit 
11 with Titleist for a few yeah. years there. Um, yeah. Not easy to find, though. Yeah. Not easy to find. But, oh. Zook. Oh, I think you know what my answer is going to be. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm definitely – Definitely ripped. Um, I like that. I, I wish there was a way. I don't know why brands don't look to diverge from the one, two, three, four. Uh, it <laughs> seems to be too common. Not that it's a big thing. Everyone marks up their mm. ball with a Sharpie anyway in terms mm. of um, mm. ident- for identification purposes, but just mix things up. Um, yeah. 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 I'm I'm gonna go. I ripped. I love double digit numbers. I've managed to get some crazy ones in the past, so um, I'm all about odd numbers. Digits. Uh, Callaway call. Oh, they did call it. They don't always call their um, their pitching wedge a ten iron, but Callaway calling a pitching wedge a ten iron is cool. Jake, ripped or yipped? <laughs> yipped. <laughs> What's a ten iron? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it the same loft and everything, or is it anything special about it? Or it's literally just a marketing, just thing? an average fifty-two degree pitching wedge, I think. Yeah, yeah, you've gone yipped, Chris. What do you think? I know what you're going to say. Oh, uh, I, I'm frustrated with clubs as it is. Anyway, I believe yeah. all clubs should just have their degree on them. Um, there's a Boss. lot of misnomer yeah. around yeah. around what a club is. Um, you know, you look at sevens. Irons, um, game improvement irons are probably three to five degrees stronger than a traditional loft on a seven. Uh, so the club itself mm. is almost meaningless. So mm. I, I really think we should just go through the bag with degrees on them. Yeah. But anyway, I like that. Um, I, I really like, that. like it. It's it's different. Um, so I'm I'm it's it's a ripped from me. I like the ten iron. Cool. Cool. I'm a Callaway fan, so I don't mind the 10 iron. I couldn't agree with you more about the degrees, especially when people are changing their loft and lie angles and whatnot. Yeah, just put the degree on it. Um, Some of my forged irons, I've got Callaways here. They're just degrees. So I've got a 52, 56, 60. So yeah, I like that. Question. um, Wildlife roaming the course, ripped or yipped? Here in Australia, we get a lot of kangaroos. Ripped or yipped? I don't know. I went ripped just because, I don't know, it's always good to see an alligator crawling across the fairway yeah. <laughs> in, in America. But, yeah. yeah, other than that, yeah, I went ripped. Ripped. Luke. Uh, ripped. It hasn't affected any of my play, but those listening or, or viewing, I highly recommend uh, a bit of a Google search. Uh, it might be on YouTube, but uh, search for Curb, Curb Your Enthusiasm Black Swan. Yeah. Uh, okay. You'll be rolling on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ripped. I love it. There's nothing better than a beautiful sunny day in Australia and you've got kangaroos on the side of the tee box. Um, a couple of times when I was in Darwin, I did come across a crocodile at Gardens Park um, and Ooh. I hit the ball yeah, near the, the dam and there was a croc there. Didn't go get that. Um, crocs are way more aggressive than alligators, so you want to keep steer clear of them. Um, and I remember at Riverside Oaks way back in the when I was learning to play golf, smashed a, a drive and a magpie swooped down and picked my white ball up and Ooh. took it away. Busted. <laughs> um, using a sharpie to mark your ball is better than a printed alignment on your ball. Ripped or yipped? A sharpie is better than a than a printed ball. Uh, I went yipped <laughs> again. A lot of yips mm-hmm. tonight. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't do it personally, and my putting's not good enough that it matters for me to line up the ball anyway. <laughs> but, um, sure, you are. I, I get. I guess it's it's good because the there's probably a fair few balls that don't come with that alignment mm. line, so I can understand mm. people doing it, and you can get those, mm. whatever they are. The, yeah. The but, little so it's got to be pretty Templates. straight if you use in the, the template thing, so yeah. yeah. But I went yipped. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do it. I'm like Jake. I'm yipped. I don't do it. I, I probably should, uh, but no, I don't uh, – I'll mark my ball, but I certainly don't put in an additional line. I just use what's yeah. on the ball. Look, I, I'm going to go yipped as well, even though I do do it. I I just only do it out of necessity. I don't like the fact that when you hit a driver or something, if you compress that ball, you end up with Sharpie marker all over the face of your driver. So 
Um, I'm sort of moving away from that and going purely towards the uh, the printed alignment tools or the um, the divides, which I've been using on divides. Um, I play better when I play with someone I can beat is easily ripped or yipped. If I'm playing someone I can whip. I play better ripped or yipped. I went yipped. Um, mm. I pl I play with Chris a fair bit, um, but. Uh, what are you implying there, Jack? Yeah, yeah no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which way is this going to go? Chris, Chris drags me down. No, um, yeah. no I'm, pre I'm pretty competitive, so I'm, I'm more yeah. competing against myself and I guess focusing on yeah. trying to break 90. Um, that's my yeah. kind of goal yeah, at the moment. Too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it, I would be the opposite. So if I'm playing with someone that's better than me, that's going to make me want to play better, yeah. I think. Chris? Yeah, I'm the same. You're, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, Jake's a better golfer than me and, and playing with him a lot uh, really engages my game and focus mm. to try and lift my mm. game to match his. Um, his, yeah. his race to and and competitiveness to, to consistently break 90 is dragging me along and, and lowering my scores. Yeah. So, um, yeah, certainly uh, yipped from me. Yeah, any any uh, sportsman worth their weight in gold would probably say the same thing. I'm going to go yipped. I've played some of my best golf against pros or, um, or very low handicappers, even though, you know, I'm not playing to beat them. I'm learning and lifting a game. It's about that focus, isn't it? It's like if you if you got – Two minutes on the court in the Sydney Kings, you know, you'd lift your game, wouldn't you? Because you, totally. you, you dial it in. Um, the same thing with golf. Like, I learned a lot about um, hitting 75% strength irons when I was playing with some of these pros. Like, I just saw how they were just sort of concentrating about hitting it straight, and that changed my game. So, yeah, the, I think um, my tip would be to play with players better than you. Um Last one for the week before we go to uh, an ad break. Uh, I always stretch before teeing off on the first. <laughs> uh, well, I don't do it. I probably should. Um, so I went yipped. Um, yeah. But I have slowly started to try and hit a few balls into the net before before a game. And nice. I yeah. think it does help, especially those first few mm. holes. But definitely, definitely mm. don't go over the top. Mm. With the stretch. What about you, Zeke? Uh, rip from me. I need to get yeah, at I least, know you. you know, a dozen or so hits in the practice nets to warm up before the first yeah. tee. Otherwise, I'm a write off for the first few holes. So, yeah. Mm. Ripped. I'm going to get ripped as well. Um, never used to stretch at any sport that I used to play. And that's why I've got so many bloody debilitating injuries now. I'm 50. Um, if you're 50 plus like me, check out Phil Mickelson's daily um, stretching. Some really good yeah. tips. Ah, he's, um, he's, yeah. um, he's got a good routine. A very good routine. Mm, and he's just got those rubber bands he puts on yeah. the side of the cart. Really good stuff. Um, awesome. Thanks, guys. That was Ripped or Yipped. Uh, back in a You're moment. You're listening to the ECG Hackers podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Each week, we are dropping a new episode, which you can find on Spotify or YouTube. Also, check us out on Instagram and Twitter or X at ECG Hackers. Send us your funny golf tales, ecghackers at gmail.com. ECG, where everybody can golf. Welcome back to the ECG Hackers Podcast. I'm the Ash Man, joined by Zook and our friend Jake, who's uh, from the Newcastle area of New South Wales, uh, Australia. This is the ECG Hackers Podcast. We talk about all kind of things, golf, and we don't take it too seriously. We love the game. Uh, we're no experts, but uh, we are definitely passionate about all things golf. Now, boys, I collect golf ball markers. Um, so my obsession at the moment is collecting ball markers. Have you guys delved into that at all by any chance? No, it's not you? something that that uh, has caught my um, gaze whilst yeah. I've been in golf. As you can see, I do collect things by my background. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, ball markers haven't really uh, registered or resonated with me. So I'm certainly interested mm -hmm. to hear what you have to say here, Ash. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, before I, I go into a bit of history, I've been using – I was using this Star Wars Rebels coin for about 15 years 
that was my ball marker. I got it with a um, Star Wars 3.75 inch figure that I got. Um, cool. My current obsession is collecting US Masters ball markers. So that's from this year. It has every hole's yardage on it. Um, and then commemorative on the back. Are they double sided so that they've got the yeah, full 18? The big ones are. Yes, correct. They are. Okay. Um, and then I've collected some really awesome um, US Masters ball markers with the year and the champion on it. So I've got Adam Scott's 2013. I've got all Tiger Woods and all Chevy Bella Ceros. So that's what sort of um, cool. teed my fascination just, into. Just ball one markers thing: on. you really didn't, you really didn't think the change of camera through for this segment, did you? Because the the camera was a fair way away. I didn't. For, for anyone watching at home. Yeah, ignore me. I was just holding up some US Masters pins. Um, all right. So, have you guys ever heard of the the term a stymie in the world of golf? A stymie. Ah. Get a load of this then. I'll do a bit of reading here. But um, did you know that when legends like Arnold Palmer, Ben Hogan, Jack Nicholas began playing as kids, there was no need for a ball marker? That's because the rule, the stymie rule, was in effect. Stymie spelled S-T-Y-M-I-E. Stymie rule was a pretty fascinating part of golf um, back in the day. If two balls were more than six inches apart in the green, the ball closest to the hole stayed where it is and blocked potentially the other player's ball. That's called a so stymie. You could, snooker, you could snooker people. Yep, that's right. That was actually the the strategy on the green would be to snooker your opponent. Wow. wow. Yeah, so they could try and chip it over the top or they'd bump your your ball closer. So wow. isn't that fan, fascinating? Stymie. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit of a strategy you could have. But if the balls were closer than six inches, the closer ball had to be lifted to allow the player a clear shot. This rule added a whole new layer of strategy to the game. But in 1952, the Stymie rule was abolished. So it was only in the 50s. That's a, a long time man- since the golf has been played until until the early 50s that that was in play. Wow, that's fascinating. Must be 200 years. Wow. Must be about 200 years, I think. Yeah. Um, so in 1952, the Stymie rule was abolished and a new rule mandated that any ball in the way must be marked um, if in- interfered with play. Uh, so this is when the use of small coins or ball markers came into effect in the 50s. In 1956, on the putting green, a ball should be marked with a small coin or similar, was changed to shall be marked in 1976. So it took another 20 years for them to actually say it shall be marked, not should be marked. Made it actually something you had to do. In 1984, um, just, just from our perspective, that's hilarious as auditors dealing with accounting and auditing standards in terms of that, that wording, shall and should, right. is, is prevalent throughout what Jake and I deal with. Uh, is it really? So, yeah, oh, mate, cool. Yeah. That's why you giggled. I like it. Uh, 1984, a ball must be marked before being lifted anywhere on the course if it is to be replaced. So use of a ball marker or a small object uh, was recommended, and 1988 became a ball marker, um, officially in 1988. Before 2019, a player could putt with a ball marker still in place, but now it carries a one-stroke penalty. So that's only five years ago. You could putt with the ball marker still there. I don't know if you try and do that, but anyway, then your it comes off to the side. Yeah, yeah, you could putt around it or over the top of it. Um, many golfers believe you must place the ball marker directly behind the ball and in line with the hole, but it's actually not the case. You can actually part, place it any side of the ball as long as it goes back to where it originally was placed. Um, hopefully I'm not boring you with my obsession here, boys. You no, did learn this is intriguing. Oh, I've, I've, I've learned. I've, the, the stymie thing still, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's still in my head. In. should play stymie next time. We'll play a stymie yeah, we should. <laughs> Maybe have a pack <laughs> yeah. We'll play stymie rule. Yes, that's right. And just don't use super soft max balls, which I found out recently are oversized balls, Jake. Wow. Super soft max. Oh. Anyway, um, golf ball markers be, have become highly individualized. Tiger Woods used a 1932 US quarter representing the year his father was born. Phil Mickerson prefers a silver dollar that belonged to his grandfather. Uh, one of the most famous markers was owned by Tony Jacklin. It marked a two foot putty needed to tie the American team of this 1969 Ryder Cup. In an incredible act of sportsmanship, 
Jack Nicholas picked up Jacqueline's marker, handed it to him, and conceded the putt, resulting in the first ever tie in Ryder Cup history. Now, that silver marker, uh, which was a gift from Jacqueline's wife, sold at auction a few years ago for $10,000. So that's one of the most expensive ball markers out there. I'm surprised it's um, not worth more. That is one of the most yeah. famous events to transpire yeah. in golf history. One of the greatest well, that's US, so. moments, one of the greatest mm. moments of sportsmanship ever seen mm. um, on yeah. the golf course, let alone in the world. So that that seems a bit low to me. But anyway, mm. um, yeah. it's Good not point. cheap. It's probably, but, um, no, I it's not. It it's pro- that's US as golf. well, so it's yeah. probably 20 grand. Yeah. Um, if you want to check out golf ball markers, I've, I've just written down a few things you should check out. Titleists have some amazing stuff, pretty sleek. Um, I've seen some Malbon brand, had a couple of ball markers. They're hot. Love that brand. It's a hot brand. Um, there's a cool brand called Pitch Fix, which have the pitch, the divot replaces with the ball markers. Um, if you want something a bit more personalized, there's one called Seamus Golf, uh, handcrafted markers. I've got one with the Dewar's Scotch from them, um, mm. in copper, copper one. Um, Birds of Condor have some awesome stuff. Uh, they've got some, um, Happy Gilmore, you know, things like that, enamel ball markers. Um, Scotty Cameron got some great stuff. But, yeah, I just wanted to talk about my obsession, obviously, which is the ball markers. Um, A lot of the time now I use poker chips as well. Um, So a big poker chip. And I, whichever course I play at, and I I have the luxury here on the Gold Coast is literally within about two or three kilometres of where I live, there's about six golf courses. So I just drive around every now and then and grab a new ball marker for the collection. Um. And the current ball marker I use is the ECG Hackers <laughs> Podcast Poker Chip. I need to get um, one of those. Yeah, but, nice. um, I've got some here for you, boys, next time we play. But this is my current one, Ash, which is, uh, as you know, I rock Mizuno. And ah, as you know, yeah. Mizuno is a um, a brand for many sports, such as baseball. Yep. So I've got a, a hat wow, clip sick. with a yep. baseball mitt. And the magnetic wow, marker cool. is a uh, baseball. So I think very that's cool. cool. That's what I reckon. Good. That's awesome. Jake, I want you to think about your ball marker next time. Lift your ball marker game. I need to get I need to get one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, I just yeah, hope that the was crappy my... ones that come with the gloves. <laughs> oh, I do, yeah. <laughs> Lift the game, boys. That was my obsession. Thanks for listening. Uh message from our sponsors, and then we're gonna be back with my favorite. Who's in your form? The brand golf ball is up to 70% cheaper than retail. We're one of Australia's largest sellers of second-hand golf balls, so you save big time. Discountgolfballs.com.au. Never pay full price again. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm going to quickly hold this up to you, Chris. This is the this year's US Masters ball marker, so it's got the removable magnetic one in the middle. Yep. Around the outside is the yardage of every hole, front nine, back nine. Very that, cool. That costs about 30 bucks. Very cool. Um, yeah, awesome. All right, boys, it's time for – It's time indeed. It's time. Hey there, everyone. It's Belvedere here again. It's time for this week's Who's in Your Four Ball? Back to you, Ash Man. Thank you, Belvedere. This week's Who's in Your Four Ball, the theme is in honour of Xander Shoffley's one-time win in the PGA Championship. It's one-time winners or one-time champions. can be any sport or entertainment. Um, you, what you have to do is you pick three one-time winners to join your, your four ball. Uh, we do this every week. Zook's the man who starts. Zook, who's in your four ball one-time winners? I'm trying to remember who came up with this. I know it was in the chat between the two of us, whether it was you or me, because I um, I struggled and then I ended up with a plethora of options and I think I've got a yeah. pretty good squad here. So cool. um, I've stretched the boundaries a little bit, which is a little unlike me, but uh, mm-hmm. hopefully you'll enjoy the ride. So okay, um, team captain. Uh, is a one-time winner of the Bunta Eve Classic Pod Race. Uh, <laughs> and so I have Anakin Skywalker. Oh, in my squad. No. 
I'm Very going good. Clone War. I'm going Clone Wars era Anakin, even though he may yep. have won it as a uh, as a as a youngling. But yep. um, okay. I'm okay. Um, I'm pretty confident with uh, his abilities of the Force. He'll be able to yes. lead from the, from the front. Right. I, I, I did actually hear Jedi's were banned from golf. <laughs> banned. Uh, with my second pick, I went to ensure. Someone had the correct genetic makeup. So seeing that he has had two successful daughters on the LPGA um, and one of them arguably being the uh, most informed golfer in the world at the moment, um, my second member of my team is Peter Corder. Uh, oh, nice. Peter Corder okay. uh, won as a professional uh, tennis player, only won one major, and that was the 1998 Australian Open. And so that one oh. win gets him on my squad. I didn't know that was him. Uh, and then in terms of my last member of my team uh, is someone in the entertainment industry. He's only uh, he's only won one Oscar, and that was for Gladiator. Uh, and so Rusty Crow uh, yeah. gets the uh, gets a run <laughs> in my squad. Uh, and Love then it. as a and then as a caddy. Now, this yep. was intriguing or something I didn't believe when I first read it. But this individual only ever won the WWE Championship once by defeating his long-term <laughs> rival, Hulk Hogan. And that individual is Andre the Giant. He's our caddy, yes. uh, and he's big enough and bold enough to carry all four, <laughs> our bag, all four of our bags. Oh. So uh, Andre is yes. uh, our caddy. So that's my four ball. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll go next and then we'll go Jake. Chris, that was a really good four ball and I do stumbled upon the fact that Andre only got one title as well. I was blown away. <clears throat> and, then it, and then it was bought off him by Ted DiBiase. That's right, the million he dollar man. Never lost man. it. Eh? No, wow. Um, I've gone with um, a man who on September the 14th, 1999, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in the throat, uh, 1999 on SmackDown, WWE broadcast, which was on a Thursday night, September 14, 1999. This man won his one and only world title um, at the age of 54. My team captain, Vince McMahon. He won the, he won the title <laughs> once. He did. And then lost it the next night, I think it was. Um, then I've gone with something. Um, I actually really enjoyed this. This was a challenge finding this. <clears throat> I delved into the world of Formula One, which I usually do when I'm looking for some of these uh, left field um, entrants. I've gone with Jean Lacy. He okay. only yep. won one, one race, the 1995 Canadian Formula One Grand Prix. I remember him always being up there against Ayrton Senna and, and Schumacher and some of these drivers. Um, <laughs> Was he racing for Ferrari at the time when he got the win? He was for Ferrari. He started off with Tyrrell, um, yeah. but he was with Ferrari. Yeah, he, he did have a car. Squads. Yeah, he was. Uh, 32 podiums, two pole positions, four fastest laps, only one GP, Jean Alacy. Um, Then I've gone with someone I'm hoping Jake hasn't done, but the 2002 Winter Olympics, Salt Lake City, <laughs> Stephen Bradbury, Exactly the same age as me. I think he's a couple of days older than me. Um, he won that gold medal in the short track ice skating when everyone else fell over Last in front of him. Last man standing. Last man standing, won gold. Um, so my team is Vince McMahon, Jean Lacey, and Stephen Bradbury. That was a lot of fun. Now, nice over to Jake, what? Thank you, Chris. Um, who's in your four ball? This is the first time you're a four ball virgin. <laughs> Um, so to speak, uh, who's in your four ball? Um, I really struggled with this. Um, so you probably oh, need some. Fact, you probably need the fact checkers to check mine. Okay. I, don't even know, I don't even. I don't even know if these people qualify. But um, nice. and I also stuffed it up. I've done a five ball. Um, <laughs> forgetting. Oh, one I'm make one, you caddy. Okay. Mm. Well, give it. I was lazy and picked Xander, so given he's just one, so he can be the caddy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Why not? We'll, we'll, get, a, right we'll get a pro to show us all around. Um, yeah. And during my search, I found Steve Elkington from Australia, um, oh. which I don't know which one he won, but he won 
Yeah. He won the PGA US Championship. Won the PGA. PGA yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he won it uh, twice. No, he won the he won the he won the Players Championship twice. He only won the PGA. Yeah, yeah he won the fifth major twice. Definitely yep. once. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> and then while I was looking through, um, I went Tom Kite. Mainly because oh, yes. I knew, I'd never actually seen him play, but I was like, I know the name, and then I finally figured it out because he was on The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah. So we'll get him. Is he, he always the US Open? The wide brim. Yeah, I think he had the, the brim. Hat, brim? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, big yeah. thick glasses, big, big thick glasses, thick square glasses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. That's a good. That's actually a, a decent, decent team you got there, Jake. So yeah. far. Yeah. I think mean, I think he was prominent on some Sega Mega Drive golf games too. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then finally, I tried to find someone outside of golf. Um, <laughs> I thought we might thought we might need a, a little bit of aggression on the team, and went with uh, Pat Cash for his single oh! win. Nice Nobody. pick. Nice pick. Nice call with the. He's got a. He's got to wear the checkered bandana headband Has though. To. Has to. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Boys so yeah, and that, girls, that was that was good, Jake. Thank you for for uh, getting involved in who's in your four ball. Um, that's about it for the week, gentlemen. Uh, anything else you want to add before we head off to the DP World Tour starting in about 30 minutes? So I'm going to go watch it in Australia time. Um, Where are they this week, Ash? Uh, they're in the Netherlands, I believe. Ah. Okay. Let me so let me check. Let me check. So it's um, finally in back in Europe, are they? After the, oh. <laughs> the after <laughs> four months, yeah, um, in Asia the, and, I, and whatnot. Yeah. I, I guess. Well, actually, I'll, I'll tell you where I'm at. I'll give you. I'll give you my fantasy team. So they're in Antwerp, Belgium. Sorry. Okay. Um, teeing off in about half an hour. In my fantasy team, I did really well last week. Um, I've got Yannick Paul from Germany, who's um, then I've got Just Luton from the Netherlands, Connor Syme from Scotland, Jordan Smith from England, Adrian Tegu, Spanish. And this guy, Kiradesh Apibanrat, man, he's been up there for the last month or so in the DP World Tour. Have you, have you seen He's him? the only name I remember is The Rat. He, that's the only yeah, name the I, rat. I, I knew out of all of those. Um, yeah. I know it's a world tour and I know it's not the top tier of golf, but mm -hmm. I was really struggling to rattle off and remember who any of those names were. But lucky right, you yeah. mentioned The Rat. I love the rat. Maybe you've love heard of rat. Adrian Otago. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe. But yeah, Kiradesh Appy Barnrat's currently at three under. So um, check him out if you get to watch the DP World Tour. This guy's big fella from Thailand. Um, my wife's from Thailand, so I, I sort of have this feeling I I, I go for him. Uh, but Appy Barnrat definitely someone to uh, to watch with entertainment. Um, Zook, as always, mate. It's been so good to catch up with you this week. Thanks for everything you do for the podcast. Yeah, man. Uh, Jake, been a pleasure, man. Always welcome. And uh, thanks for joining us this week, mate. Thanks for having me. I will be down Newcastle Way and we will play a stymie rule four ball with you two boys. <laughs> Thank you. Same time next week, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. It's been The Hackers, episode 16. We'll see you next week. Till then, peace Cheers. out. This is the ECG Golf Club. <laughs> And welcome to this week's Hackers Podcast. Put your pants